land in sight. That was the word from the sailors aboard the ship. Land in sight. Soon, Fievel Mizell and his entire family would be in America, reunited with their pa. Fievel Mizell, eight years old, had never even met his own father. Papa had gone to America years earlier and had earned enough money and sent it back to the shtetls of Poland to send for his whole family. And now, after a long two-week passage in steerage on the ship, after eating cabbage soup every day for lunch and for supper, they had finally arrived in their new country. The family had survived war, famine, excruciating poverty. But that was all in the past. Now, Fievel Mizell was looking forward to being a real American boy. Everyone who was living in steerage on the ship was invited to come up the big steel staircases and stand on deck in the fresh air so they could get a glimpse of their new country, so they could see New York City. Fievel was thrilled. He clambered along behind his mama, all the children behind her like little chickens after a mother hen. First there was Rivkala, and then there was Kvola, and then there was Hannah, and then there was Benjamin, and then there was little Fievel. When they got to the top of the ship and stood on deck, there were people everywhere. Fievel could hear every kind of language being spoken. There was Yiddish over his right shoulder. There was Russian over his left shoulder. Somebody behind him was speaking German. There were other languages he didn't even recognize. And people were all pressed against the rail, and they were looking at the big buildings of New York City. Fievel had never seen a building that big. Why, the buildings in Warsaw, in his home country of Poland, were large, but nothing like this. He'd never seen anything that tall. My goodness, what did they keep in those buildings? And then he noticed that everybody's gaze had fallen on one particular thing. Fievel squeezed between some ladies and got up to the rail. They were all looking at a woman. She was huge. She was green. She had a book in one hand and she was holding a torch in the other. Fievel stared and stared. He heard a noise and looked to his right. The lady standing next to him was crying. He tugged on her skirt. She spoke Yiddish, like himself. What is that lady? What is that statue? With tears streaming down her face, the woman said, She is our patron saint. She stands for freedom. She is here to welcome us to America. Fievel couldn't believe it. They didn't even know him yet. No one in America knew Fievel Mizell from Wilkominski, Poland, yet they put up this big fancy statue to welcome him. This was a marvelous country. Before Fievel had another thought, big bombs started booming above him in the sky, fire streaking across in front of the clouds. Mama literally hit the deck with her children, and as they fell to the wooden floorboards of the deck of the ship, Fievel heard his mama say, Oh, my God, we worked so hard to get away from war. We wanted to come to America, and now we're caught in the middle of another conflict. But it was not a war. The Mizell family had the good fortune to arrive in New York Harbor on the 4th of July, just at sunset. And those were fireworks bursting around the Statue of Liberty, but they'd never seen fireworks. They had no idea. Someone ran over to Mama and lifted her to her feet and explained to her in Yiddish so she could understand, this is not a war. You are not in danger. These are fireworks. Why, it is the nation's birthday. This is a celebration. My goodness, Fievel could hardly wait to get off that ship. They build this beautiful lady to welcome people to the new country, and then all of these fireworks, it was more marvelous than anything he could imagine. Mama said that they could not go directly into America. First, they had to be processed. It was one of the first English words that Fievel learned, processed. What did it mean to be processed? Did it hurt? Fievel soon enough found out what processed was all about. That meant that you were going to stand in line in the facilities of Ellis Island 
for what seemed like the rest of your life. There were lines for everything. There were lines for papers, and then you had to fill out the papers. And then there were lines to have your papers checked to make sure you had filled out the papers properly. And then there was another line to turn in the papers. And then there was the medical line. You had to stand in line for ever and ever and ever, a long line with all the other people in front of you, and wait to see a doctor. Everyone had to be examined. If you did not pass the medical examination, they would send you back. Fievel stood in line for a long time, and finally, when it was his turn to see the doctor, the doctor stood him up on a little stool and checked his limbs to make sure his arms were straight, make sure his legs were good and strong, and then he got out a little light, and he looked into his eyes and into his ears and down his throat, and finally, he took out a little silver hook. He hooked the little instrument right in the corner of Fievel's eye, and he started to pull the flesh away from the eyeball. He was checking for contagious eye diseases. But Fievel was fine, and then he stepped off the stool, he took a couple steps forward, and without even saying hello, a nurse pushed his sleeve up and rammed a shot into his arm. My goodness, it felt like he had been stabbed with a sword. But Fievel had heard that if you did not pass the medical examination, they would send you back. And so he was probably the first boy in all of American history to look at the nurse and smile after he'd been stabbed with that horrible hypodermic needle and say, thank you. <laughs> now Fievel knew two English words. He knew processed and he knew thank you. Next it was Benjamin's turn. Benjamin stood on the stool and the doctor checked him over, but when he took out the silver hook and started to pull the flesh away from Benjamin's eye, the doctor frowned. He took out a piece of white chalk and he marked an X on Benjamin's shoulder and had Benjamin stand off to the side. Fievel ran to his mama. Did, did Benjamin not pass? Is an ex bad? Will they send him back? Mama pursed her lips together and looked very worried. Another doctor came over, looked at Benjamin and talked to the first doctor. They talked back and forth for several minutes. And then finally the doctor smiled and said that Benjamin may continue. Oh, Fievel was so relieved. What if they all had to go back? That would be the worst thing ever. He couldn't imagine anything worse than that. As soon as they were through the medical examination, a Red Cross worker came to Mama and said, Now, if you'll follow me, I'll take you to the dining room. The dining room. When they walked in, there were long tables, benches, and everybody was seated at a table. And then kitchen workers brought in platters of food. There on a platter in front of Fievel Mizell was a whole loaf of rich people's bread, the kind he had always dreamt of. It was spongy like cake. And when you sliced it, it was snow white on the inside. Fievel watched the other people at the table. He didn't know how to uh, butter the bread or to put anything on the bread, and he wanted to make sure that he did it right. He knew how they did it at home in Poland, but now he wanted to be a real American boy, and he wanted to eat like real Americans. He saw a man across the table take a jar and screw off the lid. He dipped a knife in and took out this shiny purple stuff, and he smeared it all over the bread, and he started to eat it. So Fievel did the same thing, and when he smeared his bread with the purple stuff and took a bite, he turned to his mama and he said, Mmm, that is good. It, it tastes kind of like candy. Of course it was jelly, but Fievel had never seen it before. He stopped after a couple bites because he saw a lady at another table. She also had a jar, and she took the lid off, and she took out some brown creamy stuff and smeared it on her bread and started to eat. So Fievel got the jar and did the same thing, and when he took a bite, Oh, it was kind of sticky. It got a rip of his mouth. But he liked it. Of course, it was peanut butter, also something new. All of a sudden, Fievel's face lit up like one of Mr. Edison's light bulbs. He took his jelly bread and his peanut butter bread. He looked at his mama and he said, Mama, I bet no one has ever thought of this before. And he slapped them together and took his first bite of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He couldn't help it. He leaped into the air and said, Oh, Mama, to get any closer to heaven, you'd have to be dead. Fievel was so excited about peanut butter and jelly, he ate four sandwiches without stopping. By then, his throat was so packed full of bread and peanut butter, he really needed something to drink. One of the Red Cross workers came over and she set down two pitch pitchers in front of the Mizell family. 
One pitcher was full of milk. Mama quickly grabbed that pitcher, set cups for her children, and poured milk for everyone. As Fievel sipped his milk, he noticed a man on the other side of the table picked up the other pitcher and poured some and started to drink from that. Mama, said Fievel, can I have some of that? It was a clear yellow liquid. Mama and her children had never seen a clear yellow liquid like that. At least not a clear yellow liquid that you would put in a pitcher and set on the dining table. No, said Mama. We're from Poland. We don't drink that. But he's drinking it. I don't care. Don't touch it. <laughs> it was apple juice. There was so much that the Mizell family would have to learn. They had to wait on Ellis Island for a few days. And then finally, Uncle Moisha, one of Papa's brothers, came to get them. And then Fievel had the ride of a lifetime. He went into New York City in a motor car. Have you ever ridden in a motor car? It was the most thrilling thing Fievel had ever, ever done. He got to sit right on Uncle Moisha's lap and blow the horn whenever people got into the street. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle Moisha took them first to a bathhouse where they got all cleaned up, and then they got haircuts. Fievel thought to himself, now that I have on clean clothes and my hair is cut short, I look like a real American boy. But when he and his older brother Benjamin came out of the barber shop, someone looked at them and scoffingly said, immigrants. That was a new English word for Fievel, immigrants. He knew what processed meant. He knew how to say thank you. But this immigrants, what was that? It sounded like a bad thing. Fievel would not be an immigrant if he could help it, whatever that was. And then they went to Uncle Moisha and Aunt Rachel's house. It was a lovely home. And Aunt Rachel was so proud, she had to show them everything. The most amazing thing that Fievel noticed was they had a room called the sitting room. And you know what you did there? You just sat. That's all you did. There were rooms for sleeping. There was a kitchen for cooking. There was even a back porch. But in the sitting room, you just sat. Fievel knew that Uncle Moisha and Aunt Rachel must be very rich. Why, in the shtetl of Poland, Fievel, his mama, and the other four children all lived in one little room with a dirt floor. Fievel and all the brothers and sisters slept in the same bed. They slept in that room. They ate in that room. They sat in that room. But here in America, you had different rooms for all of that. Fievel was standing next to the piano. Aunt Rachel was very proud of her piano, and she kept playing songs over and over again. He was dancing on one foot and then the other. He really had to go to the bathroom. Uncle Moisha pointed to the stairs. So Fievel went up the stairs. In Poland, they just had a little shack built around a hole in the ground. Why would you go upstairs? But Fievel found a little room. They had a room for that, too. There was a little stool in the corner with a hole in it and water in a bowl. And when you had finished, you pulled a chain and, almost like magic, the water just disappeared. Fievel was amazed. He ran and got his big brother, Benjamin. For half an hour, they stood on either side of the toilet, taking turns. My turn. No, no, mine. Whoosh, 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 back and forth, flushing the water out. When Aunt Rachel found them, she laughed and laughed and laughed until her stomach hurt. Her nephews had never seen flush toilets before. <laughs> After several days' visit with Uncle Moisha and Aunt Rachel, then it was time to get on a train and travel to Duluth, Minnesota. That's where Fievel's papa lived. That's where the whole Mizell family would live. When they finally arrived, Fievel recognized his father from a photograph that he had seen. His father was standing there on the rail platform. When they got off the train, Papa hugged him so hard, Fievel thought his head would pop off. Now they were all together after many years. When they went to their home, Fievel was so excited to learn they had their own sitting room. They had their own bedrooms, at least one for the girls and one for the boys, and another one for Mama and Papa. They had a vegetable garden out back. Papa was going to get a job on a farm. Fievel was on his way, Fievel was on his way to becoming a real 
American boy.